This is Pokhara, Nepal, the second largest city in the country of Nepal with a population of just around half a million. Pokhara is known to be one of the best places to visit as a tourist or as a local for the vast amount of things there are to do in this beautiful city. Pokhara is surrounded by Fua Lake, which is a very beautiful lake surrounded by mountainous landscapes. And so guys, in today's video, we are going to be sharing with you everything you should do when you're visiting Pokhara. Now, I just wanna mention these 15 things to do in this list of Pokhara. Things to do is not exhaustive of everything you can do in Pokhara. There are so many things that you're able to do while you're exploring this city. For me, I could have stayed there easily for a month and I would have never even gotten bored in that amount of time. I was there for about eight, nine days and I had such an amazing time exploring so many things to do in this area. And so guys, I just wanna mention that the list of things to do are not in any order from best to worst. They're just simply how I laid them out for you. So make sure you stick around till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of the amazing things that we did while exploring Pokhara. And number one on the list is taking a luxury bus over to Pokhara if you're flying into Kathmandu like most people do. Now, this isn't as much a thing to do, but I figured for those of you that are considering going to Pokhara, Nepal, you're probably wondering how you should get there from Kathmandu. All right, we're going to a place called Jagadamba Travel. And now there are multiple options depending on what you want to pay and how you want to experience it. I recommend the luxury bus if you want to save some money yet still have a comfortable ride. And uh, it's got a cup holder, a pretty good amount of leg room space, fan here and curtain. And so it's a very inexpensive way to get there yet still comfortable. But you also have the option to take a flight. So as a foreigner, you'll pay the foreigner price for the flights, which is about $100 roughly, depending on when you book it, uh, for a one-way flight from Kathmandu to Pokhara. So it's gonna be much more efficient. The flight is literally only 20 minutes, and uh, it's a pretty efficient process to go in the domestic terminal, land in the tiny little Pokhara airport, and you're there. Uh, but it saves you that time, especially if you're on a tight schedule. Now, if you wanna go with an even less expensive option, you can go with a non-luxury bus and you'll pay probably around maybe five to seven US dollars, and it'll take a similar amount of time to get there. So keep in mind, guys, the luxury bus, the reason why I liked that one so much is because they're big, nice, like, plush, lazy boy leather chairs. Now, to be fair, the pictures look a little bit better than the reality of them. I've been in some luxury buses around the world, and this one looks nicer in the photos than it actually is, but it's still quite comfortable. They say it's like five hours, but it ends up taking about six or seven hours to get there because you stop about three times for either snacks or meals on your way. So I'm assuming we're at the uh, halfway stop. Our buddy, I think, was tired, didn't want to let us know. And uh, we've got a nice little river out here. So this is a beautiful stop up we have right here. They usually have AC on them when it's hot, comfortable chair. They serve you usually water on the bus as well as sometimes maybe a soft drink and a coffee. And so, yeah, they take care of you on the luxury bus and uh, it's, it's definitely a cost effective, yet yeah, relatively comfortable way to get from Kathmandu to Pokhara. Number two on the list is to take a hot air balloon at sunrise in Pokhara. So if you want to experience these incredible views without rolling up your sleeves and trekking, or if you already went trekking and you want to just go for a hot air balloon ride, taking a nice morning AM cruise is the way to do it. So you can go for about 30 minutes up in the air and you'll pay just around 100 US dollars to go up there and the hot air balloon holds around six to eight people plus the captain and they'll take you up there. You'll be able to see amazing views of the surrounding mountains. You'll see the clouds kind of filling in the valley and Pokhara. Oh, we're still here. We're going. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh, all right. Well, that stopped us. Yes. <laughs> we have made it. Oh, oh. Then we're dumping this way. And you'll also get to go with your group of people that you went on the hot air balloon with after for a little coffee and tea. They take care of you. Oh, thank you very much. All right, it's official. Oh yeah, a lifetime award to see, see Annapurna Range, Matt Candy on November 21st. Uh, Easy way to wake up in the morning and experience some of nature's most beautiful moments while you're there in Pokhara. 
Number three on the list is to visit Annapurna Cable Car. So the cable car is going to bring you up to Serengeti, which is beautiful to visit whether you're going up for sunrise or for sunset. Now keep in mind this cable car, I believe opens at 9 a.m. or at least that's what it says on Google. So you can't take the cable car to get up there to Serengeti for sunrise, but you can basically go up there with a taxi or a bus and then you can take the cable car back down if you're going for sunrise. The unfortunate part is I believe the cable car closes at 6 p.m. Depending on what time of year you're there, the sun sets sometime around that area. Now, I went up right at sunset. We didn't make it up to the Serengeti viewing tower, but I would recommend if you can come up there early enough, do about a 10 minute hike from the Annapurna cable car landing spot up in the mountain, and you'll be able to see 360 degree views of both Pokhara, the village on the other side of the mountain, and all the towers massive snow-capped mountains in the distance. So it's really just such an incredible site. One of my favorite views I saw while I was in Nepal, and uh, you can do it for a very inexpensive price. I wanna say it's around seven US dollars for a round trip ticket for a foreigner. By the way, I do wanna mention when you get to the top of the cable car, there's a couple activities that you can do if you're there early enough. Like there's a zip line bike wire where you can ride basically a bike across there. And there's that restaurant. That looks like such a vibe. Yeah. Big swing that you can go on and um, have some fun doing that. A bit of an adrenaline activity, but we weren't able to do it because we arrived there so late. Number four on the list is take a boat out on Fuwa Lake. So Fuwa Lake is the large lake that basically gives Pokhara such a beautiful identity because you have the lakeside area where people hang out on, then you have Hua Lake, and then you have the mountains that just surround it. And it is a very beautiful lake and the locals preserve it in such a great way as they don't allow any motorized boats on the lake. You can take basically a canoe slash rowboat, which can fit usually three to four people plus the captain who's gonna take you around. Or you can take a larger size family boat, which can hold, I believe, up to eight people. How many people are pedaling? Only one people. One person pedaling that whole thing? Yeah. yeah. That guy's got legs of steel. <laughs> In order to take the rowboat out that holds about four people. If you ride a boat with the driver, it's like 760. If you ride the boat on your own, pay 660. If you ride the boat for the rest of the day, you get it for 1300, which is roughly five US dollars. Now it's up to you how long you want to go out on the boat. You can go for just 30 minutes, you can go for an hour, you can go for a couple hours. It's up to you how long. I went for one hour with some friends and that was the perfect amount of time to be able to see everything. Which also leads us into number five, which is Tal Barahi Temple. So this temple is the most unique temple that I would say I saw in all of Nepal. The reason being is it is an island temple. So that's why it goes hand in hand with renting a boat and checking out this temple because the only way to get to this temple is by boat. Upon arrival to the island, you're able to walk around basically probably a one-fourth of one acre area that has the temple. It has a small little shop where you can buy different items and some snacks, and then it also has some uh, portable restrooms on the island. So you can go by a private boat like I was talking about in Thing to Do number four. If you just want to do a quick trip to the temple and you don't want to go on a longer boat ride, maybe one-eighth of a kilometer just to go from uh, that side of the lake right over here to the uh, island uh, temple. Is this the main area where people usually get a boat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Main. And we took basically the longer tour so we get the yeah. full. People come over here just for the temple and then go right back. Oh, okay. So it's a really quick like jump yeah. across. And what do people pay there for? Uh, uh, maybe 200. 200. Max. Yeah, no well. more than that. And there you can do a shared boat and just pay less than a dollar per person to be able to get over to the temple and back. So number six on the list is the World Peace Pagoda. The World Peace Pagoda is a towering stupa that looks over all of Pokhara. And in order to get there, you have to take a taxi from the downtown area. Usually they'll charge you between 1500 to 2000 for a round trip taxi. You could probably get it maybe a little bit cheaper for negotiation. And basically what that means is they'll take you up, they'll wait for you while you go explore the stupa. So uh, I'll be back uh, in a little while and then they'll take you back down the mountain. Now, when you get up to the top there, there isn't anybody asking to be a guide for you, unlike some of the other temples and stupas that I have visited. So you'll have to either bring a guide from the city with you if you want someone to tell you about it, or you'll have to read some of the signs. While you're up at the stupa, you'll want to make sure that you make some time to sit down and enjoy the views. All of the snow-capped mountains, then you have the lower altitude mountains, 
Right next to the stupa, you'll actually find a bunch of restaurants and cafes with incredible views. So it's just a great spot to enjoy a coffee, to enjoy a meal, to find some items at the gift shops there, whatever it might be while you're looking at one of the best views in all of Pokhara. Number seven on the list is to walk lakeside in Pokhara. So Pokhara, once again, as I've mentioned many times throughout this, is surrounded by the Fua Lake. And when you're on the mainland there, right next to Fua Lake, there is a long strip of walkway where a lot of locals in Pokhara and a lot of tourists, pretty much everyone that's in the Pokhara area comes down and hangs out here throughout the day, whether it's in the morning for a nice cup of coffee, throughout the day to just have a beautiful nature walk with restaurants on one side and the lake on the other, or into the evening when people are going and visiting the fun park there, trying out some of the local restaurants and bars along the lakeside. It just has a very upbeat and exciting vibe that I guarantee you, you'll probably go there almost daily because the vibes you'll have there are just the best. Number eight on the list here, as I mentioned in that last one, you'll want to visit the Disneyland or the fun park that they have right there on the lakeside. So just like I mentioned in my Kathmandu video, the rides are definitely not as safe as you find in some other countries. It doesn't look like there's any sort of handrails or anything. No guardrails on this $1.20 ride. Uh oh. Yeah. If you win, you literally fall over. If you're looking for a fun thrill, some uh, interesting rides to go on, there's like a Ferris wheel, there's a big ship that goes pretty high up that I went on, as well as you'll be able to have some like carnival treats there, whether it's like snow cones, ice cream, or just other like finger foods that you might enjoy eating at a carnival. Number nine on the list is to go restaurant tasting on the Lakeside Road. So Lakeside Road is going to be the most popular place that people go out for food actually. So along that road, you're going to find pretty much every cuisine you could ever imagine. If you want Nepali local food, if you want Italian food, if you want burgers, if you want to just find some fun sports bars, if you want to find modern bars, if you want to find Indian food, if you want to find pretty much anything that you can think of, I was able to find it. Good coffee shops there as well bakeries. All of those are going to be located right on that lakeside road. And you can walk, I would say probably a mile each way or a couple kilometers each way. And you'll be able to find a vast amount of different restaurants and options. But you can also do other things on lakeside road as well, like do some shopping for some local Nepali items, or you can find uh, SIM cards if you need one. You can find multiple hotels in that area along that road, uh, guest houses, hostels, Pretty much everything you would need as a tourist visiting Pokhara, you're going to be able to find right there on the lakeside road. Number 10 on the list, you're going to want to try out the Takali set food. So it's just like a couple minute ride away from where the lake is. This is what the sign looks like. So I mentioned this also in the things to do in Kathmandu video that I made, but I had a completely new and unique experience when I went to the Takali set restaurant. I really liked the Takali food here, I think as number one. Maybe it was because I went with friends who knew how to eat it and they were able to train me, or just because I liked the design of the restaurant. We went during the day and they had these tables that were like built into the ground. And so it felt like you were sitting on the floor, yet you were still at a table. Cool experience, nice staff, really delicious food. And I learned how to eat it properly with my hand there, my right hand. You just grab a, a piece? Grab like a piece. Yeah. Yeah, guys, I would recommend trying this out. If you're not even into hanging out local foods and you're one of those tourists who just likes to have pizza and burgers, test yourself. Try this out, have something local, and you might find that you really enjoy it. Guys, so I just washed my hands and my fingers are literally pruny because they've been soaked inside of all this moisture as I've been eating. Number 11 on the list is to visit a luxury spa. So the reason why I share this one with you is because some of you might be doing some hiking, some of you might be doing some trekking, and some of you might just be like me and wanted to try out a massage. And so the cool part about the place in Pokhara where you can get a massage, you get amazing lake views and a really, really nice staff that will make you feel so at home and they will give a great massage or whatever service, whether it's a manicure, pedicure, foot massage, uh, whatever it might be related to the massage industry, they're able to take care of you at a great price. And so I went over to this luxury spot right at sunset and got a nice experience. 
going and getting a one hour deep tissue massage. Then I went inside the sauna for a little bit. And then after I even went inside their jacuzzi, which is great. They fill it up with like bubbles and I just kind of relaxed there after the massage and it was amazing. Number 12 on the list is to visit Begnas Lake. So Begnas Lake is one of the seven lakes in the Pokhara region. Obviously Fuwa Lake is the main one that Pokhara is on. But if you take about a 20, 30 minute taxi ride over to Begnas Lake, you actually have a whole new set of activities that you can do. I will tell you straight away that Begnas Lake doesn't have the same vibe as Fuwa Lake or the main Pokhara area, but it's still a cool place to go for a few hours if you have the time. So I went out on the Begnus Lake with my taxi driver and we went for a little boat cruise and this time I rented a larger size boat for the three of us. We went there just a little bit past uh, sunrise and you could see amazing views from a different angle than you can see in the poker area. So it's definitely a cool place to check out if you're like me and you love being on the water. Number 13 on the list, try out the famous fish restaurant on Begnas Lake. So I had been told multiple times while I was in the city of Pokhara, you need to go to Begnas Lake and try out their fish restaurant. And if I'm honest with you guys, I don't personally love fish. I like salmon, calamari, shrimp, kind of the you know basic stuff but I'm not a huge fan of seafood outside of some of those items. But I was like, you know what? I sometimes don't give myself enough chance to try out new things because I've had maybe one or two seafood items that I didn't like, so I just assumed that I don't like it. Oh, oh perfect, that'll get the flies away. And this time I was like, all right, I'm gonna try out the uh, fish restaurant because it is that popular. And so I went over there and I tried out the uh, fish barbecue. And I wanna say that I had- Talibia. Talibia. Yeah. Uh, Talibia, all right. So Talibia, that's the most popular fish in here? Yes. Oh, okay. And did this one come from the lake or the fish farm? No, from the lake. Oh, from the lake. So this was a full natural set of fish right here that were swimming around. So I had this type of fish for my first time and it was a bit of a learning experience on how to eat it correctly. As you can probably tell in the videos, I was struggling a bit. This is seaweed? <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. It wasn't like a super fishy taste. You could taste how fresh it was and it came directly from the lake that we went boating on on the previous thing to do. Guys, yeah, so the total price for us to eat all that comes out to about 27.20, which is just about like uh, 20 US dollars. I would recommend, even if you're not a huge fan of fish, you should try out their uh, fish barbecue and give it a shot. Number 14 on today's list is visit the Rupa Suspension Bridge. Now the Rupa Suspension Bridge is a bit of an excursion in itself just to get there. You have to take the taxi from Begnas Lake and right next to it, you'll find where Rupa Lake is, one of the seven lakes in the Pokhara area. Probably about 10 minutes away from the suspension bridge and then you do a small little hike down the hill, get to the suspension bridge, which I wanna say is somewhere around maybe a quarter of a kilometer long. Uh, somewhere in that range and you walk over the Rupa Lake and the views are incredible. It's like a much longer bridge than it seems like because once you start walking across it I'm like okay now I think we're I think we're now I think we're still probably one third of the way here but the views from up here are gorgeous. See the farmland right there, right there and it's nice there's not too many other people here then the bridge isn't shaking as much it's just us when we walk across it now for suspension bridges that i've been on it's not that scary because it's very much fenced in as well as the bottom there's not really any parts where you can like slip through that's pretty far that was like half a kilometer it took us like six seven eight minutes to walk all the way across and so i think if you're kind of afraid of heights you'll feel better on this type of bridge and we made it all the way to the other side, to the other side. Probably the longest jump I've ever done. Probably about one fourth of a kilometer. And we're back on the other side. Uh, versus like when I went to this bridge in Hunza, that every step there was like a big gap in between it. So this one, like it's a, a nice chill walk across and you get a little step into nature and see some more views of the Pokhara region. And number 15 on the list is going to be experience the traditional Nepali dances. I actually didn't even plan to go and experience this. Yeah guys, now it is time to uh, walk the streets here and see where we end up. I was trying to figure out where I should eat and I saw a sign that said, Fuwa Paradise Restaurant, traditional dance from 7 to 9 p.m. I was in the middle of shooting a video on my main channel, World Nomad Vlogs, 
And I was like, oh, this might be kind of interesting for me as well as the uh, viewers to see what the traditional dance is like. And then if it were daytime, you'd actually be able to see that we're lakeside. And so I went over to this restaurant and was able to watch the live music from the local Nepali uh, people performing some of their traditional dances. And it was a cool experience to kind of get a feel for, you know, what type of dance moves are common in this side of the world? What type of music uh, are they dancing to most often? And I enjoyed it while also having a nice meal. They've got a bunch of different options the at the restaurant that I went to. However, the food was decent. I wouldn't say it was the best meal I had in Pokhara. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It was it was just subpar. I more went there for the dances and music session to see what that was like. Uh, so there might be other places in Pokhara that you can experience the live music and live dance but that was the only one that I personally went to and experienced. So I'd say it is worth a visit. Um, at least go there, have a beer or have a non-alcoholic drink, whatever you prefer and get the experience. And so guys, that wraps up the 15 things to do in Pokhara. As I say in all my videos, this list is never exhaustive. I did as much as I could in the amount of time that I had there, and I loved Pokhara. For sure, Pokhara for me is the best city I visited in Nepal. Now, I only visited Bhaktapur, Nagarkot, Kathmandu, and Pokhara, but out of those places, Pokhara was just my favorite. Vibes, things to do. I have a long list of things that I'm going to do the next time I'm in Pokhara. So maybe if you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that one day there's gonna be a things to do in Pokhara part two. Where I'm gonna try set things like zip lining, I'm gonna try paragliding next time, and maybe do a little trekking in the Pokhara area in the Himalayan mountains. And yeah, there's just a, a lot of different things you can do. So the main lakeside area in Pokhara, there's a lot of restaurants there. There's actually on the other side of the Fuel Lake near the Annapurna cable car, there's a whole nother set of restaurants that I didn't even get to experience. So if you're looking for some more things to do, some of those that I just named off might be interesting for you if you have the additional time. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. And if you can smash that like button, it helps this channel so much. I just started this channel not too long ago, so I'm looking to create travel guides on this channel from all over the world as I travel to these different countries. And so if you can hit that subscribe button, it helps me so much and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.